Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com back today for a little bit of painting fun and I am so excited because I have a load of new colours. The stationery shop on the island is where I buy my paints and typically they don't have a lot of stock in there but they've just started um, a, a new section with a lot of these deco art paints and they are so exciting in terms of all the colours that I can now have available. Of course they're quite expensive um, compared to where you would be in the UK, the US or somewhere like that but for every now and again for um, a little bit of extra colour and pizzazz in my paintings I'm going to splash out on a few of these. So I'm going to start off with of course the regular white and then in terms of the colours this one is purple sunset. Ooh nice. And then this one true red. That one. Then this one, chartreuse. And ooh look at that. What a lovely limey. Well not lime. A lovely, it's a green. I can't say I, well, I suppose it's just like chartreuse, wouldn't it? So that's a nice bright green color. Then this one is deep midnight blue, and it really is very, very dark, near black. Then I have Indian turquoise. This is lovely, look at this one, very nice. And bright orange, ta-da! And of course my white. And I thought today I would do a dirty pour. See, I seem to have fallen in love with doing dirty pours just recently. Um, but instead of doing it in stripes, I'm going to try and do it in more of a, a random pattern and crisscross all of the paints. And we will see what we get. It may be good, it may not. But with all these colours, I'm sure to get something that I really like. So in terms of my recipe, I used my scale today. Um, and I used 15 grams of the paint and added... 10 grams of the Floetrol as my pouring medium and that pretty much worked across the board for all of the paints. I didn't have to add any kind of water or anything. And then for my cell making ingredient I used this coconut milk hair serum. It's very very concentrated so just one drop per colour. So I'm going to just um, mix my paints, get them all ready in the dirty pour cup and then let's pour them out and have some fun with it. So my cup's ready, let's just go for it. So as you can see, I poured the paints out rather differently today. Instead of trying for the striped effect, I really did kind of just pour them randomly in a great big circle in the middle and then as the cup was getting low then I used some of the you know the dribbles at the bottom just to create little lines across the paint and kind of break up some of these other shapes. So now I get everything that we need out of there. Ooh, even the inside of the cup is delicious with all these colours. So now let's tip and see what we get. I've just put a sheet of paper down to cover my work surface a little bit. I find that it makes cleaning up just that little bit easier. And I'm gonna really go for it today, so I'm not gonna worry about what tips off the side because I want to spread these paints out nice and big and get the benefit of seeing all the lovely shapes and cells and colors that we can create. So I'm gonna move them off there quite quickly today. and completely cover the canvas with all of these shapes and colours. Okay. Now I like the way it's got this kind of, it's almost a slight diagonal um, zigzaggy pattern to it today. That looks really nice. And I've got some subtle areas here. This is much more quiet and subtle colours. And then there are some brighter colours here where I have the orange, the red, and especially that chartreuse green coming through. So I just need to pick up a little bit on my fingers, covering these corners, but I think I've pretty much got it covered. Let's see, a little bit there. A couple of little thin bits on the side where probably my um, hair serum has created just a little thin bit just here. Just a little 
dab with my finger, she'll fill those in. So sometimes I find um, with the dimethicone products, you can um, mix the paint what you think is perfectly well, but just on the corners and on the sides of the canvas here where it just tips over the edge, um, the paint can seem uh, just a little bit thin, but generally if you just pick up a matching little drib on your finger and touch, touch that up, um, then it should all fill in just fine. It just seems to be sometimes this um, dimethicone product, the hair serums and things like that, they're so concentrated that you really only need the slightest touch and uh, just a little bit too much and it can make some of these areas a little bit thin. But a quick touch with your finger while the paint is wet and these just fill in easily and they shouldn't be noticeable at all when they're dry. But again, if they are, um, what you can do is save your cup so if you put your cup off to one side now and just put a cover over it or just put a wet cloth or something over the top, then inside this cup has all the matching colours that you're going to need for your painting. So at the end, if you find that there's you know a little spot on the corner that you've missed or a little area where the paint has gone a little bit too thin, then you just take your cup and a brush and you can pop um, matching colours from your cup onto your painting and then you won't end up with any little... Um, areas where you've got a little bit that's missing and you don't have any colour to match. So there we go, I think I'm fa finished with that. That was really all I needed to do to create a great painting was just mix some great colours, throw them all in together, pour them off and I'm more than happy with that as a result. Oh I think I have a hair so I need to get my um, pin in there and just pick that hair out. But I'll wash my hands and then we'll take a look at the details. So there we have it and I like how subtle it is. Even though I put together all of those really really bright colours, um, it's just a very subtle overall look in a lot of ways. So the co colours have kind of muted together and created really beautiful patterns and designs. Lots of interesting cells and of course you know there's um, bright, brighter areas running through the painting too where the paints haven't mixed in some areas so those are, bits are nice. And of course then overall it has a much more muted and subtle effect too, which always interests me, you know, you put a load of really bright colours together and sometimes just the way they mix can create a really nice subtle kind of finish. So I'm loving it, I'm loving the sides especially on this one, as the paint's gone over the sides, really really nice, you can't, you can't disagree with that, that's lovely. So once again, thank you very much for watching and just hanging out with me while I did a little bit of painting today. I'll dry it up and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Well, I promised you a view of the finished painting and this is it. This is all I have to show for this painting. Unfortunately, um, I went to clean my table off so that I could make a, a nice tidy picture of the painting. And as I moved off to one side, my hands were wet, the painting was wet and I, I thought, oh, oh, oh. Oh no, and I dropped it on the floor, it landed on one corner and the paint just went everywhere. <laughs> so I've spent, instead of the last two hours doing some painting, I've spent the last two hours trying to clean paint off of every surface in my room. And this is all I have to show for that painting. Um, a dented canvas and some pots and things that I haven't had time to clean up yet and a load of cloths and rags and painty stuff everywhere. So. That was kind of disappointing, but never fear. Uh, the colours were nice. I've still got some left in, oops, in all of these pots. I'm going to mix up some more and uh, have another go. And I hope you'll stick around and watch while I make it next time. <laughs> See you then.